Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. M. N. Gupta, Emeritus Professor from Department of Biochemical Engineering and Biotechnology at IIT Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about a module called fatty acids and this is under the paper structure and function of biomolecules 2. Fatty acids are constituents of all fats or oils and are also present in some other forms of lipids as we have seen in the last module. In organic chemistry many books refer to carboxylic acids as fatty acids. This nomenclature came about because fatty acids which are part of fats and oils are carboxylic acid with a long chain. While chemistry of fatty acids is dictated by the functional group which is carboxyl group, the COOH group. We learn in the next few modules that in biochemistry the nature of the chain also dictates so many properties and the biological implications of these fatty acids. So the objective of this module are very simple. We will learn about various fatty acids. We will understand, try to understand how the properties of fatty acids dictate in turn the properties of fats and oils in which they are present. We will also understand the nutritional importance of some classes of fatty acids which are called EFA that is essential fatty acids, MUFA that is monounsaturated fatty acids and PUFA that is polyunsaturated fatty acids. So the concept map is very clear and simple that we will try to look at fatty acids as consisting of unsaturated or saturated fatty acids and among unsaturated fatty acids we will try to classify them and learn about this classification monounsaturated fatty acids which have just one unsaturated one double bond polyunsaturated fatty acids which have more than one unsaturated bond between the carbon carbon atoms in the long chain and finally we will also learn about these this new class relatively new class of fatty acids which have attracted considerable attention even in the public domain called omega 3 fatty acids. Fatty acids are part of many lipids. Notable among these are oils and fats which are triglycerides. While we will cover triglycerides in the next module, we already know their structure from the earlier module. So all the properties of fats and oils which we are going to be talking about in greater detail in the next module whether these properties are physical, chemical or we are talking about their nutritional values etc. They are all decided by the fatty acids. So hence fatty acid constitute a very important part of the oleochemical industry. Fatty acids have carboxyl group as the defining functional group with a side chain 
which mostly consist of hydrocarbon chain and as we have already mentioned this is actually a very long chain. The most common fatty acids consist of a straight chain of hydrocarbons which are connected to a carboxyl group. So, the formula is like RCH2 N where the N may vary the CH2 part may be consisting of a saturated cha chain or an unsaturated chain. Unsaturation may involve one double bond, more double bonds, it may even have a triple bond very rarely, equally rarely the chain may have branches in some cases. The nomenclature of the fatty acids is actually quite simple. This nomenclature describes the chain length, the number and positions of the double bonds if any are present in the fatty acids. The nomenclature also indicates the branch point if any. Like in most of the other organic compounds, both IUPAC and common names are followed for naming fatty acids. In biochemistry particularly, the use of the common name is more prevalent. Thus, if we look at the structure of the butyric acid, which is also called butanoic acid, biochemists tend to call this But generally butyric acid. The bigger fatty acids like palmitic acids are in fact almost always called palmitic acids and rarely the name N hexadecanoic acid will be used. So, for higher chain fatty acids especially as well as the more complex fatty acids, the use of the common names is prevalent. So, if the common names are more prevalent in biochemistry, it may be interesting to look at the origin of these common names. Often the common names originated from the plant which produces a fat, oil or wax which is rich in that particular fatty acids. Like many scientific terms, the origin is a Greek or Latin word. For example, the C12 fatty acid is called lauric acid. That is because the name is derived from a Greek word lauris which is used for laurel plant. Similarly, the C14 fatty acid is called mericetic acid and that is because it is derived from the nutmeg and the nutmeg in Latin is called meristica. We have palmitic acid for palm because in the Latin palm is called palmo. So, similarly stearic acid is derived from the Greek word steer which means hard fat. Stearic acid is a C18 carboxylic acid and it is a melting point of 69.6 degrees centigrade. It is a very common fatty acid in fats. The phrase hard fat refers to its high melting point. Its presence in a fat would make that fat solid even at moderately high temperature. It also tells us that the ancient Greeks were familiar with the concept that the fats melt at high temperatures. 
सी ट्वेंटी फैटी एसिड एरेशिडिक एसिड डिराइव इट्स नेम फ्रॉम द लेटिन वर्ल्ड एराशिस विच एक्चुअली रेफर्स टू द लेग्यूम जीनस लिग्नोसिरिक एसिड हैज ए कंपोजिट ऑफ ऑरिजिन इन लेटन वर्ल्ड द टू वर्ल्ड आर लिग्नम विच मीन्स वुड एंड द सीरा विच मीन्स वैक्स इन दिस नोमेंक्लेचर द नंबर ऑफ डबल बॉन्ड्स इज इंडिकेटेड बाई राइटिंग द नंबर ऑफ कार्बन इन फैटी एसिड एंड स्टेटिंग द नंबर ऑफ डबल बॉन्ड्स द टू नंबर्स आर सेपरेटेड बाई ए कोलोन हेंस पॉमिटिक एसिड विच एक्चुअली कंटेन्स नो डबल बॉन्ड एंड सिक्सटीन कार्बन एटम इज सिंपली डिस्क्राइब्ड एज सिक्सटीन कोलोन जीरो द कॉमनेस्ट अनसेचुरेटेड फैटी एसिड इज ओलिक एसिड इट्स नेम इंसिडेंटली is derived from the latin word oleum which means oil this also indicates that our knowledge of chemical structure of oils and fatty acids came up much later oleic acid is an 18 colon 1 fatty acid thus oleic acid is actually can be looked upon as steric acid with one double bond in the carbon chain oleic acid with one unsaturated bond belongs to the class of fatty acids which are called mufa which is a short form for mono unsaturated fatty acids it is also a norm to indicate the position of the double bond or double bonds with a superscript on a delta according to this way of naming fatty acids oleic acid will be described as 18 colon 1 delta 9 and that is because the ninth carbon atom is the smallest number of the carbon atom participating in double bond formation that is as per the norm in the organic chemistry nomenclature for various compounds there is a another important mufa that is the mono unsaturated fatty acids that is palmetto oleic acid it is a 16 colon delta 9 fatty acid so palmetto oleic acid is the mufa which corresponds to the palmitic acid that is because both palmetto oleic acid and palmitic acid contain 16 carbon atom from these two examples we can see that both mufa have double bond between 6 carbon number 9 and carbon number 10 there is a another class of fatty acids which are called omega fatty acids they are numbered little differently there the last carbon atom is counted as omega 1 thus omega 3 fatty acids have a double bond between omega 3 and omega 4 carbon atoms we have been writing structures of all carboxylic acids in unionized form for the sake of simplicity at physiological ph that's around 7 all fatty acids in fact would occur as carboxylate anion as coh group ionizes at acidic ph the exact pk 
of carboxyl group. In the case of each fatty acid, of course, depends upon the structure of the fatty acid. In the case of the fatty acids which contain a double bond or more than one double bond, two isomers are possible which are stereoisomers. The configuration around the double bond can be cis or the trans depending upon that as we show in the slide they will be called cis delta 3 enoic acid or a trans delta 3 enoic acid. The configuration around the double bond in most of the unsaturated fatty acids is cis and not trans. Even in fatty acids having more than one double bond, the position of one of the double bonds is often between the carbon number 9 and carbon number 10. However, it is not always so. Let us look at now the examples of the some common fatty acids which contain more than one double bond. These examples consist of linoleic acid which is a 18 colon 2 delta 9 and 12 alpha linoleic acid which is also a fatty acid consisting of 18 carbon atoms and three double bonds. The positions of these three double bonds is represented by delta 9, 12 and 15. Arachidonic acid is a another example of these such fatty acids. It consists of 12 carbon atoms and 4 double bonds and hence it is described as 20 colon 4 delta 5 8 11 14. It is to be noted that arachidonic acid does not have a double bond between C9 and C10. Another thing to be noted is that while in the nomenclature of the chemical compounds, the prefix poly is used for many. In the case of the fatty acids, all fatty acids with more than one double bond are clubbed together under the category of PUFA which stands for polyunsaturated fatty acid. Another thing to be noted about the structure of these double bonds is that the PUFA are never conjugated. That means alternate single and double bonds are not present. Invariably, the carbon atoms participating in double bonds are separated by at least one CH2 methylene group. Even in PUFA, all double bonds are in cis configuration. More is the unsaturation, lower is the melting point of the fatty acid and the corresponding triglyceride of which the fatty acid is a constituent. Thus, an oil would contain triglycerides formed from MUFA or PUFA. A fat is more likely to have triglycerides formed from saturated fatty acids. The chain length also dictates the melting point of the fatty acids. The lauric acid has a melting point of 44.2 degree centigrade, which is about 25 degree centigrade less than that of stearic acid. Even palmitic acid, which has just two carbon atoms less as compared to the stearic acid, has a melting point of 63 degree centigrade as compared to the 69.6 degree centigrade of stearic acid. PUFA thus show the synergy of the two factors. Arachidonic acid has a melting point of 
49.5 degree centigrade min is a melting point of minus 49.5 degree centigrade and this is liquid at room temperature how these two factors influence the melting point is perhaps best illustrated by melting point of oleic acid which as you may recollect is a fatty acid with 18 carbon atom and one double bond at position 9 of the carbon chain this has a melting point of 13.4 degree centigrade whereas the melting point of the palmetto oleic acid is minus 0 0.5 degree centigrade this interdependence of melting point chain length and unsaturation is not only relevant in the context of the melting point of corresponding triglycerides but as we will see has physiological relevance in many contexts they are fatty acids which even have a triple bond the two examples of such fatty acids are shown in the slides which are zymanic acid and mycomycin in mycomycin please note the presence of conjugated double bond which as we indicated earlier is not a common structural feature of polyunsaturated fatty acids let us now look at properties of the fatty acids and how they actually originate in their structures the melting points actually are decided by the way fatty acids interact and pack the structured fatty acids have only single bond between various carbons in the chain these single bonds do not hinder rotation and confer higher flexibility to the molecule these chains also occur in extended form with no steric hindrance the result is a crystalline form in which close van der waals contracts between the neighboring atoms are present these structures hence create fatty acids with higher melting points as we have seen in unsaturated fatty acids on the other hand presence of double bond or double bonds in cis forms disturbs regularity in packing hence intermolecular interactions are weaker in unsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fatty acids this then results in lower melting points of those fatty acids the solubility of fatty acids is also decided by chain length simple short chain carboxylic acid acetic acid is freely soluble in water the longer hydrocarbon chain devoid of any potential for interaction with water results in poor solubility in water lauric acid 12 carbon atom fatty acids totally saturated zero double bond has only 0 0.063 milligram per gram solubility in water so the longer hydrocarbon chain reduces the effective overall interaction of water due to the polar carboxylate anion the limited solubility of lower hem homologues of fatty acids like lauric acid is due to the charged the the ionized carboxylic group that is the co minus anion palmitic acid which is a longer hydrocarbon chain has much less solubility of 0 0.0083 milligram per gram of water steric acid with two more ch2 groups has merely 0 0.0034 milligram per gram solubility in water fatty acids are simplest examples of lipids 
by definition are soluble in most of the organic solvents. Fatty acids, however, can be dispersed in water as well. The soap, which are sodium salts of fatty acid, acids, form micelles at a concentration of and beyond what is known as critical micelle concentration CMC. Arachidonic acid is an important example of polyunsaturated fatty acid. It has considerable biological importance. Arachidonic acid in humans is a precursor of a class of compounds which are known as eicosanoids. The word eicosanoid is derived from again Greek language where in eicosi means 20. Thus eicosanoids are C20 compounds. Prostaglandins are the most well-known example of an eicosanoid. Prostaglandins were discovered by a Swedish scientist named Ulf von Euler in the 1930s from human semen and were so named as he believed that these are produced by the prostate gland. In fact, the semen prostaglandins are derived from the seminal gland. Prostaglandins are now known to be present in almost all tissues of both male and female animals. Prostaglandins are oxygenated eicosanoids. Von Euler showed that these are hydroxy fatty acids. Later, with the availability of gas chromatography and mass spectrometry, Sune Bugstrom and Juan Scharol, the fellow Swedish scientist, established the structures of some of the prostaglandins. Sune Bugstrom and Bengt Samuelson, along with John Wayne, were awarded Nobel Prize in 1982 for their discoveries related to prostaglandins and the related biologically active compounds. It was discovered by John Wayne in 1971 that aspirin inhibited the synthesis of prostaglandins which led to their immense pharm pharmacological importance. This triggered extensive research on prostasenoids in general. The prostaglandins as a class are derived from polyunsaturated fatty acids by enzymatic action of reductases and isomerases. The various classes are designated by PGA to PGI and a subscript which donates the number of carbon-carbon bond, double bond outside the ring. The prostaglandins with a subscript of 2 that is having 2 double bonds outside the ring are derived from arachidonate. Arachidonate can be converted into any of the 3 classes of compounds. If acted upon lipoxygenase for example, it forms leukotrienes. These compounds were first detected in leukocytes and, three, and have three double bonds. If arachidonate is acted upon by cyclooxygenase instead, it converts arachidonate into either prostaglandins or thromboxins. Thromboxins contain six-membered ether ring. Their structures are shown in the slide. These were so named as they were isolated first from blood platelets which are also called thrombocytes. All thrombexanes have an hydroxyl group at the carbon number 15. Their nomenclature is similar to those of the prostaglandins. In most mammals 
arachidonate is the polyunsaturated fatty acid which is present in plenty hence pge2 and tx2 are the most common eicosanoids arachidonate is derived from the membranes through the action of enzyme phospholipase a2 alternatively a phospholipase c action yields diacyl glycerides the diglycerides diacyl glycerides acted upon by a lipase gives arachidonate arachidonate formation in this case is the rate limiting step in the production of prostaglandins and thromboxanes it was john wayne who also found that inhibition of prostaglandins by aspirin is due to the fact that the aspirin inactivates an enzyme called prostaglandin synthase this enzyme has two components cyclooxygenase and hydroperoxidase cyclooxygenase introduces these oxygen atoms into the prostaglandin from molecular oxygen o2 this leads to the formation of pgg2 in a two electron reduction process the dioxygenase is a heme enzyme bound to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of the cells aspirin is actually acetyl salicylate it reacts with the active site serine of the cyclooxygenase the acetylated cyclooxygenase is inactive and cannot carry out the conversion of arachidonate eicosanoids including prostaglandins are called local hormones these influence activities of the cells which synthesizes them as well as neighboring cells while normal hormones with which you are more familiar such as insulin and adrenaline have a more uniform action the action of these local hormones are varied and depend upon the cell type the discovery of the cyclic amp which was called secondary messenger had created great excitement hence the finding that prostaglandins act via cyclic amp renewed that excitement pge at a concentration of 10 to the power minus 8 molar inhibits the lipolytic action of epinephrine glucagon corticotrophin and tsh in adipose tissues it does so by inhibiting adenylate cyclase in fat cells in other cells prostaglandins on the other hand stimulate adenylate cyclase other physiological effects of prostaglandins include promoting inflammation and that is why aspirin is able to reduce inflammation the such effects also include the regulation of blood flow to some organs control of ion transports in membranes and synaptic transmission qfas stands for polyunsaturated fatty acids as early as 1920s the importance of linoleic acid and alpha linolenic acid in good nutrition was known and these were termed as essential fatty acids fas these fas are not synthesized by animals including human and hence must be derived from dietary sources this has led to modifying fats and oils to restructure these chemically or enzymatically to incorporate fas as constituent fatty acids the nutritional benefits of fas presumably arise from the fact that once consumed these are converted to long chain omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acids in fact there are two pufa families linoleic acid based and linoleic acid based as these fas themselves are omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acids respectively fas require both chain elongation and desaturation to generate long chain omega fatty acids metabolically arachidonic acid 
is an important omega-6 fatty acid and icosa pentanoic acid, EPA and docosa hexanoic acids are the most important omega-3 fatty acids. Fish oils are rich in omega-3 fatty acids as they feed marine organism rich in omega-3 fatty acid. While lot of nutritional benefits have been claimed for DHA, it is definite that infants need it for development of good vision and brain. Not just PUFAs, MUFAs with oleic acid is the important example have shown health benefits. Amer American Heart Association recommended diet incorporated 12% MUFA. Oleic acid is not an FA as it can be produced by animals from desaturation of steric acid. On the whole, PUFAs show greater benefits in lowering serum lipids and cholesterol as compared to MUFAs. Current improved varieties of sunflower, safflower, canola and even peanuts have oils rich in MUFAs. In western countries, specialty frying and cooking oils have been commercially available. These are sold with the claimed enriched content of MUFAs. Examples include New Sun, Clear Valley and Tri Sun. Olive oil is rich in MUFA with 78% of 18 one fatty acid. Like MUFAs and PUFAs, oils and fats containing trans fatty acids have been found to be damaging health. The levels of the trans fatty acids in any hydrogenated fat depends upon hydrogenation conditions. Ruminant fats such as present in milk, butter and tallow also contain a small amount of fat containing TFAs as a result of their own metabolism. TFAs are reported to raise LDL. Fats and oils containing high amount of TFAs are called trans fats. Margarine and many frying oils have high TFA content. Regulatory agencies are moving towards making labeling of the trans fat content in food items compulsory in many countries. To summarize this lecture, here we have learnt about the structures of various fatty acids, effect of long chain structure on various properties of fats and oils, FAs, MUFAs, PUFA, omega fatty acids and trans fats. The long chain R of fatty acids, RCOH, dictates many important activities. In a school organic chemistry, we are normally taught that organic chemistry is the chemistry of functional group. True, except in biochemistry, the R also becomes important. We have seen that the good fats and bad fats classification in nutrition, nutritional content or nutrition content depends upon R. Thank you.